Fiona Jacob, welcome to Unbroken. Thank you. It is an honor to be here. Thanks for the invite. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm so excited to be speaking to you today. So why don't you give us a little background? Tell us tell us about yourself and how you came across the three principles. Sure. Um, hmm. It's always one of those questions when you're out. It's about an interview question, isn't it? Tell me about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a 50-something woman. Never mind. I am from Ireland, as you can probably hear in the accent. Um, I have lived all around the world, including the Middle East, for 25 years. My background is nursing, but what I have done and what I've loved to do is lead transformational change in organizations, which I've probably done for about 15 years of my 25 years as a director. I have loved that. Um, I'm also a very quiet academic. I have done a couple of masters in the background just to kind of keep things ticking over, but don't tell anyone it's our secret, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how did I find the principles? Great question. So I did not find the principles. The principles found me. Nice. And I'll explain because I think it's important. I think many listeners will have maybe not the same experience, but they'll have had experiences in their life where they've experienced something that comes from nothing in the moment that has really, really helped. So when I was 25 years of, of age, I was a very young nurse. I worked in the operating room and myself and my best friend went to Iraq, as you do. Um, there was a beautiful Irish hospital there that was really helping the local population with complex disease management. And so we went there on a contract for a year. It was in ooh, 1990. I loved Iraq. It was a beautiful, and, and I'm sure it still remains a beautiful country today. But halfway into our term, it was about August, um, when we woke up one morning to find out that we were not able to leave the country. And it took maybe seven to 10 days, but after a short period of intervening time, we suddenly woke up to find that we were hostages. Interesting. Now, I panicked, everybody around me panicked. We were initially 20,000 people in the whole of Baghdad that were hostages. So there was some Irish, some English, some Americans, some Canadians, some Swiss, but also you know, a lot of Indians, a lot of Filipinos and so forth. And so we were a large group for a very short period of time, maybe three to four weeks. And I was just so crazy in my head. I was like, I'm going to die. My life is over. I'm never gonna see my parents again. And then we're going to see my boyfriend again. I mean, all of these thoughts came to my mind. And it was like, wow, I'm only 25 and my life is over. And over this period of time, as the number of hostages shrunk, we came, became, I think, 150, like in month two. A lot of people have gotten, gotten out. So there was a little bit of hope there that we might get out, but, but not a lot. Um, and it was... Basically, Saddam Hussein had taken over Kuwait, if you remember the times, and the world was coming at war. We were coming after him. And it was an unusually warm November, I remember that. And I remember having access to a swimming pool where I would just, that was my calm place. Let's call it my calm place. It's going to sound really strange. You're a hostage and you have access to a swimming pool. But we were working and um, one of our physician staff had a, a, had a swimming pool. And I remember just doing backstroke, Alexandra, and looking up at the sky, it was dark. And it was like the stars were hanging like fairy lights on a Christmas tree. I mean, it was stunning. It was beautiful. This navy black sky and these beautiful twinkly stars. And I was doing backstroke and I had this experience of profound peace just from nowhere, not invited even, it just showed up inside of me, this quiet. And I knew, I just knew in that moment that I was going to be okay. I didn't know what okay looked like, actually. I didn't know if I'd be physically harmed or, but just the sense of peace, of quiet and okayness was so 
profound. So when I say that the principles found me, I think this is the first experience where I really woke up to in my human life. There is something other than my crazy thinking. There's something that can show up in a human being, even in the most complex, most dangerous, most horrendous of situations. And we can have that experience of peace, of quiet, of calm, of ease and okayness. And the, the intervening three, four months that we had left as hostages weren't easy. So it wasn't like being the whole world was put to rights and I was let free the following day. It, no, uh, I was sexually assaulted in Iraq. Um, I was held at gunpoint for 16 hours. Um, so, so many things kind of happened. I saw people shot in front of me and it was a lot to take for a 25-year-old nurse who was just kind of, you're kind of doing a missionary mission, if you know what I mean, in that sense, going out to help others. But that sense of okayness never left, even in the midst of all of that. And, and my abiding memory of leaving Iraq was heartbreak because I knew I would never see some of the people that I had met who had been so supportive, so loving, so kind. Uh, and I also, and these were the Iraqi people. I did not know if I would just leave and never see these people again. So I had a great love and affection for the country, I still do. Um, but yeah, the principles came to me and woke me up. Mm. Wow, what a great story. Thank you so much for sharing that. And so, so I have some follow-up questions then. So sometimes when people have an experience like that, they then go searching for what it means or the source of it that kind of thing did you experience that like an explanation almost um so no so I'm going to have to be very honest here and say that I had this wonderful experience I got in touch with something deep inside of me and then very arrogantly made that about me oh <laughs> okay <laughs> so when I got home um, after the four and a half months, five months almost of being a hostage, I was, oh, look at me. Aren't I great? Oh, look how, and, and I went into a, an ego ride for a while. So I will be honest. And I'll be honest because the universe never lets go of wanting us to see the truth. Mm. So I got another two very, very loud knocks from the universe to the back of my head at two different times that went, no, Fiona, you might pretend that you're courageous and you might pretend that you, you know, this peace of mind and grace and ease was all you, but hey, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a couple of other opportunities to practice. <laughs> the last one of which really woke me up to, ah, there is no way that Fiona me, this, this little ego person that I am, could have in any way either created the scenario, allowed me escape from the scenario and keep my mental health and well-being through the scenario. It was just, it was just not possible. Mm -hmm. And I really woke up to, oh my God, there is something beyond me. There is an intelligence bigger than me. And all I knew at that point was that I wanted to coach. Mm -hmm. And I had two, three different programs on my kind of horizon. And one of them was a master's in coaching, which is actually what I have done. <laughs> I've done a master's in coaching. But sitting at the bar in the university in England, a fellow student came to me and said, hey, have you heard of this guy called Michael Neal? I went, nope. And he said, I would give up my master's program today to join his academy if I could, but I mm. can't. Mm. And I went, oh, okay, that's interesting. So I went back to my room. I Googled Michael. I listened to a couple of his podcasts. At that time, he was actually doing radio shows, if I remember, and signed up the following day for the academy. Mm. And that's how I find my way. Now, you could say again, 
how is it that you're sitting in a bar with a person who wants who is informing you that they want to do this and suddenly you're the one in the room with Michael it's I, I love that the universe is so serendipitous that it kind of brings us little nudges to help us find you could say the truth of who we are or the intelligence that that flows of the energy that flows through us in the moment yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh wow serendipity I love that you use that word <laughs> yeah I've had so much of it in my life but I put it down to good luck or yeah we can put it down to religion or good you know what I mean we kind of we make excuses we come up with a logical reason that I met this person on this day or uh, I was there when that happened so I was able to prevent it from getting worse or all of that we have logical explanations for I love the fact that there is a bigger grace that we lean into, that we can trust, that we can play with, mm -hmm. that we can rely on moment to moment. That's got us in its sights and is on our side mm -hmm. and can help us navigate our life with so much more ease and grace and allow us to thrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you, so when you began investigating Michael, um, I'm not quite sure how to say this, but did it, it must have connected with the experiences you'd had. Okay. Yeah. Of your own. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's actually going to sound a weird story, but I did the first super coach Academy that Michael ever held back in 2010. Mm. And in, in those days he had a beautiful lineup of speakers. There was less of Michael and more of these internationally renowned speakers and influencers coaches and <clears throat> see i got so much ego and arrogance anyway i walked into the room there were 50 of us beautiful souls and the the first guy who was starting that day is a guy called bill coming i don't know if you've ever heard of bill but bill is a beautiful beautiful soul he was wearing hobnail boots uh uh denim overalls a kind of a wrinkly jacket he had a scraggly beard and he looked like the farmer had just hopped off the tractor. So no, no judgment going on here. I was going, what am I going to learn from this guy? And by the first break, I had found my way back to my okayness. Wow. That's where he spoke from, how he shared was from a place that I knew of, but I spent so little time there. Mm -hmm. I spent so little time there, but my body felt the truth of how he shared. And all he shared was, Fiona, you are perfect, whole, and complete. Not needing fixing. You always have, and you always will be. Mm -hmm. And I remember dissolving into tears and probably crying for a day and a half because I never knew that was true. Mm -hmm. And even though I had the experience of I'm okay, that had felt at the time. Hmm. It had felt at the time that there was a, a safety net that caught me, but the feeling whole. It had never occurred to me that I could be, or I was, or anybody could be. But maybe those, you know, good looking people over there with their mansions and their, you know what I mean? That there were certain maybe classes of people or categories of people that look whole, but I didn't think that applied to me. Hmm. That I could stop fixing. I could stop judging. Mm -hmm. And then Michael took it to, of course, new levels by just sharing what we share about how human beings work and, and really what we've got going for us as human beings. Mm -hmm. This deep connection to life, the real-time response of intelligence that infuses our aliveness moment to moment, our creative potential moment to moment, our joy, our experience of unconditional love, deep impact others and of life it's 
it's built or opened the door in one sense. But I took the glass elevator. <laughs> 160 floors very fast. <laughs> right. I kind of landed on a soft cushion of something. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's amazing. Um, and so connected to that on your website, I noticed you say one of your favorite things to do is stand up for people's greatness. Yeah. And I love that. What does that mean to you? Well, I think it ties back into the whole perfect and complete. And we are just so amazing when we get out of our own heads. <laughs> we just don't do it very often. Me too, by the way. I, mm -hmm. I can attest to that. But the greatness is not our kind of personal ego greatness. Our greatness is this impersonal nature that we have to live in purpose, to live on purpose, to live from this creative potential that we are that's infinite and boundless and filled with everything that will allow us to thrive and grow. So when I see a person playing small, when I see myself playing small, but when I see my clients playing small, I want them to experience the greatness of being human, being alive, being joy, being content, being a thriving person uh, filled with love, life, energy, uh, delight, compassion, all of it, all of it's available. At our, I was going to say at our fingertips, but it's even more than that. It's infusing us every single moment of every single day. And I want to wake people up to that so they see that for themselves. And they go out and do whatever it is they want to do, knowing that to be true for them. I don't have a great plan for them, but in the sense of them waking up and touching that space, that possibility, that infinite potential, it's just so exciting to see what wakes up in a human being and what they do with that when they feel more alive. Mm -hmm yeah wow and i mean speaking of that one the place that i crossed your path was uh in michael neal's super coach cafe so you yeah. do supervisory calls there and yes. the thing that struck me about the calls where you're someone um submits a coaching call that they just for our listeners that they've done with a client and then you listen to it and then on on the supervisory call give them feedback about what they've done and the thing that struck me was that i could feel as you did that that energy of possibility that space that you stepped into and in, and you invite the the person you're supervising to to come into that space with you as well and i i feel this wanting to ask <laughs> about that because it's it's been such a unique experience for me and mm -hmm. like and when you do that when you step into that space I feel everybody else on the call go there too and it it feels like magic so I don't have a specific question but I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit sure It can feel like magic, mm. but actually what we're feeling is the truth of our being. Mm. When we're living from the truth of our being more and more, anything's possible. Mm -hmm. And it's our greatest way of being impactful. Because we can feel heart, we can feel truth, we can feel clarity, we can feel wisdom, either in ourselves or other people. I guess the way that I describe it is most of the time that people are in conversation, we're listening, we're listening to be right. 
or we're listening to judge or we're listening to see if we agree or we're listening <laughs> you know what I mean so we're kind of in a debate mode like oh I agree with this so therefore I will listen oh I disagree with this so therefore I won't listen and then you get your head full of thoughts about well what you're going to say when the person that you're listening to shuts up <laughs> so, <laughs> right. right yeah so there is a listening Alexandra that's I'm going to call it soul listening because I don't think I have any other other words for it today. Mm -hmm. It might change tomorrow to different words. So when you're listening to a human being, whether they're a coach or whether you're listening to the a, a coachee being coached, and you're listening from that quiet soul space. You get wisdom and insight about how to take something forward mm -hmm. because that is our nature so whether it's a you know a coaching client who's stuck or frustrated or suicidal or judgmental about themselves or others or whatever is going on when we're listening quietly from our soul we know where to go with it such that we can help the client see because we're not in you know if I'm to think of Fiona's ego as a coach if I'm coaching from my ego I am the worst coach in the world I ask the worst questions you would never want to hire me but if you touch into if I touch into that space of divine you can call it divine guidance wisdom clarity problem solving creative solution not unique to me every single human being has this mm -hmm. we all do my job is to wake people up to it but we all do but when we're there my wisdom and your wisdom we see new things together we have insight together you wake up to a way to solve the problem not because I've said anything, maybe, but even just by hanging out in this space. And that's kind of one of the cool things about coaching this way. It's like there's not a lot of effort required. But you can't fake this space either. It is either in you in that moment and you're either coming from clarity and wisdom or you're coming from our minds, our own thought created experience um but you know the difference because one has impact and the other is just going blah 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 <laughs> <laughs> and my intention is to create impact in the world and wake the coach up to their greatness but help the coach find the greatness within their clients mm -hmm. and the best way I know how to do that is for me to be quiet to listen and let whatever wisdom speaks, speak. Mm -hmm. And back to the thing, does that feel like magic? Yes, but it is who we are always in every moment. So your feeling it means that it's alive, so alive in you, mm -hmm. that you recognize the experience and the impact that's possible when we hang out in that space. Mm -hmm. And when you were learning about, I guess, when you were in the, in Michael's Academy and learning to, about the three principles and coaching in that way, was this something you stumbled upon or what did it look like your learning curve for that? Well, if I was to say, I'm probably having the same insight every day of every year for the last 14 years, would you believe me? But it's kind of like that. Mm. So first of all, I had the insight being held hostage in Iraq that I was okay. Talk myself out of that, of course. <laughs> but but I have that. I have that today. I have that insight again. Mm. So sometimes it's we have what we, what comes to mind is what we need to see in the moment mm. to help us navigate easily 
insightfully through life. And then I have lots of other insights. So it's, it's, for me, I'm surprised and delighted because the learning curve is not so much I need to learn anything. It's I'm finding my way back to what is truth about who I am, how I work, what I've got going for me, what, what, what intelligences are available to me. And my experience of that or my access to that or my moment-to-moment -moment experience of that changes. And it changes and gets deeper. And sometimes it's like an accordion. Sometimes it changes, it gets really deep. And then it gets, oh, a little bit. Deep. And then it gets <laughs> even deeper. And then it gets, so it's not, what, what I experience, I suppose, is that I never lose what I have seen. Like, really? But sometimes, like, it's a cloudy day here today in Gothenburg. Sometimes it gets like a cloudy day in my mind and I <laughs> miss that I've had the insight. And then I fall back into that space once more and it's like, oh, I'm home. Mm -hmm. I'm home. I'm home. Um, and then I, like any human being does, gets caught up in my head with whatever else is going on. And all that's shifted for me is I just don't trust that anymore. In one sense. Mm -hmm. I don't trust the crazy mind that I have that tells me my husband is this or my dog is that or my mother or whatever because we all have it we all have it the supermarket line is this and the, that person's an idiot and they're driving like a crazy whatever we all have the running commentary I no longer trust mine because I just know it's not giving me any valid information and that's really cool when you don't get caught up in that but let it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes, old friend. Oh, here you are. You're back again to tell me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I love to ignore my inner yeah. chatter. <laughs> Lovely. And do you do you ever feel, well, maybe I should say at the beginning of learning about that space, sure. um, did you ever feel any sort of resistance to it or um, I guess I'm speaking personally, sometimes when, when you're coaching on the supervisory calls, I almost feel a little freeze on of fear about stepping into that space. Ah, interesting. I, that's a brilliant question. Yes. Okay. So the answer is absolutely yes. There's a couple of things because I think for me at least, so I can't speak for you, but for me, I can speak. It puts me firmly in the unknown. Like two feet, all planted, going, I have a clue what's going to happen next. That's yeah, kind of my thing, right? Now, if you were to follow my and track my life, this is how bad things got. I used to go to an astrologer every six months and go, and what's going to happen next? And when am I going to meet my husband? And oh, I'm going to write two books. Oh, and you know, so I, I could control, I using my fingers as air quotes here, I, so I could control my life. So is it going to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G? You know, I want to control. I'm a control freak. Mm. Well, and the idea of not being in control terrified me. But I heard somebody say this, and I cannot remember who to quote on this. So if anybody, the unknown, this space of unknown is simply everything that is known but not by us. It is an infinite energy of life that supports stars and planets and trees growing and kittens to become cats and 
acorns and oak trees, all of that, it is an energy of life that infuses. It's an intelligence bigger than Fiona's puny little ego intelligence. And I call myself and classify myself as decently intelligent, but oh my God, we are relying on the source that manages everything. And it has our back. And it wants, I don't know if, if it's a he, she, it, I can't say tangibly, but it infuses us with life, with energy, with wisdom, with clarity, with creativity, with problem solving. It is a field of possibility. It is a field of love. It is a field of creation. It has the answers to the asked questions and the has yet to be asked questions. It's the field of which every form of art has come from. Every piece of music has been created from. Every relationship has been created from. It is all and everything. It's just that we we're, we're think we're tipping over a cliff and there's nothing there. But the space is full. Mm -hmm. It's filled with intelligence. So yes, I was afraid until I wasn't. Right. And I can see that that would be frightening to our egos to let go of that kind of control that they think they have. Right. Yeah. Well, well, the ego in my mind is a blade of grass in a pitch, you know, in a football pitch of, of grass. It's, it's one small piece, but it's not everything. And it's like it cannot see this expansiveness. It has no possibility to see what's possible, what is out there, this intelligence that we are, in a way. Mm -hmm. And looking in the wrong direction, just going... I gotta keep my job, you know. <laughs> He's working on that level, <laughs> right? Right. I gotta keep my job. So you know, let's play. Let's play it as we've always played it. Let's do like we've always done. Yeah. But the deeper invitation is go. Oh my gosh, the unknown has all the goodies. We get moment to moment insight. That enables us to thrive, to step out, to make decisions, to love, to stop loving, to create, to stop creating, to build a business, to stop building, all of it. We have this moment to moment insightful intelligence informing us moment to moment. There is nothing unknown about that. I don't think there's something we can rely on in the moment. And that's beautiful to wake up to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And when you find that you've maybe fallen out of that space and that your mind is really busy, is there anything that you do to get back there or to touch in with it again? I think it's a great question. Um, I think the first thing for me is recognizing that I'm not in that space. Mm. <laughs> and I tend to know that with a couple of things. One is the feeling. So for me, if I have an intense or urgent, urgent feeling, um, I'm going, oh, my thinking's off. The first place I look. And all that awareness simply is, is coming back to the present moment. Somebody described it as, I think it might even be Michael, but it's like, if you know you're drunk, you're not that drunk. <laughs> if you know you're lost in thought, well, you're not that lost in thought. Right. If you don't know, then you're off to the races with your crazy thinking, right? Me too. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so the first thing is an awareness and the second thing is just once you recognize where you are 
what naturally happens is we fall back into that space of quiet because we're back in the present moment. Mm -hmm. When we're not in the present moment, we're in our thinking. So there's only two places we ever are in life, really. One is in our thinking, lost, usually. And kind of living in the feeling of that and then the roller coaster of all of that emotion, the anger, the judgment, the, uh, the frustration, the whatever it is. Or we're home. Mm -hmm. No confusion, because they feel very different. So if you're not home, lost in thought, oh, okay, good to know. Guess what? We come back to the present. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves, we meet ourselves in the present. And we tap into and access all of those beautiful intelligences that and capacities that we are and have. So I won't say that I don't or do meditate or I don't take walks with the dog or I do. I do all the stuff that people do. I listen to music and I dance around the kitchen like a crazy person and all of that. And I know where I am. Hmm. And even if I'm lost in thought and I know that I am, I'm not concerned. This too will pass. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, that's so beautiful. And as we're coming up sort of to the end of our time here, is there anything we haven't touched on that you'd like to share before we wrap up? Hmm. What a great question. Let's see what shows up. Two words come to mind, which is really interesting, which is just know thyself. <laughs> Sounds very good. But it's know the truth of who you are, because it's awesome. <laughs> hmm. It's beautiful. It's moving. It's joyful. It's just filled with possibility. We all are it. It is in all of us. So the invitations to anybody listening, wake up to it. You're already great. <laughs> nice. Oh, thank you so much. So where can we find out more about you and your work? Sure. Well, I know I do have a website. Yes. I just do a lot with it very often so you probably find me best on linkedin um <laughs> it's very interesting uh i happen to get referrals all of the time so i very rarely use things like marketing or my website so yes let's go to linkedin linkedin fiona jacob you will find me there reach out say hi send an email or a message and i'd be delighted to respond explore uh, have a conversation with anybody who gets in touch. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for being here with me today, Fiona. It's been a delight. I, I have had that thrilling and beautiful time being in your company. Thank you so very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.